Hello, sixth grade. It's our first day of Unit 7. It's all about tape diagrams and equations. Very specifically, we're going to see how tape diagrams and equations can show relationships between amounts. So before we go any further, make sure that you grabbed a paper for today's notes. It is on the counter by the pencil sharpener. You must use a pencil to complete these notes. You have to. Here we go. Which diagram is which? Here are two diagrams. One, two. One represents this equation, 2 plus 5 equals 7, and the other represents this equation, 5 dot 2 equals 10. Remember from 4th um, and 5th grade that the big dot is just a way that we write times, right? So 5 times 2 equals 10. Which is which? And then I want you to label the length of each diagram. All right, so let's look at the first equation, 2 plus 5 equals 7. Don't write that down. Let's just think about it first. Does 2 plus 5 equals 7 represent this equation? Are we adding together a 2 and a 5? Doesn't really seem like it, so let's put it above the other equation. Does 2 plus 5 represent this equation? Yeah, I think it does, because inside this tape, there's a 2 and a 5. All right, which means that the other equation, 5 dot 2 equals 10, must go with this piece of tape. Right, should grab the red. 5, big dot, notice that it's up in the air, 2 equals 10. Okay, it says label the length of each diagram. So when we're talking about the length of the diagram, we're saying as you move from left to right, here's a box of two, here's another two, two plus two is four, six, eight, 10. So the length of the diagram is 10. Looking at the other diagram, moving from left to right, here's two, and then there's five more, two plus five is seven. So the length is seven. You might also notice that matches what came after the equal sign. So let's, let's delve a little deeper into this. It says, where do you see the five in the first diagram? Because when I look at this, it doesn't look like there's a five at all. I see twos and I see a 10, but I don't actually see the number five. But five is hiding inside. There are five twos that are added together to make 10. One, oops, one, two, three, four, five. There are five twos that are added together to make 10. So how did we find the length of the first diagram? You saw me count across, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So one way we could do it is we can count by 2s. Or we can multiply the number 2 by how many times it repeats. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we could call that 5 dot 2 equals 10. 5 times 2 equals 10. Let's move on down to number 2. Using those first examples kind of to draw from, I want you to try to draw a diagram that represents each equation. Right, so there's 4 plus 3 equals 7, and 4 big dot 3 equals 12. I'm going to pause you now. You try to draw it. Look back at these examples, these ones here, if you get stuck. All right, let's see how you did. For the first one, it says 4 plus 3 equals 7. So for this one, you needed one line. And 4 is a little bit bigger than 3, so I'm going to write 4 on the left, 3 on the right, and if it equals 7, then 7 goes at the bottom of this thing down here that we call a bracket. Okay, if you need to fix your diagram, fix your diagram now. Let's look at the next one. This one has that big dot, which again means times, or we could call this repeats. You are going to see four times or four repeats of the other number. So I'm going to split it in half, and each half and half. And we'll write a 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. I've repeated the number 3 four times. This is a really good example of 4 times 3, and if it equals 12, then 12 goes at the bottom of the bracket. If you need to fix your work, please fix it now. So some questions. How are these two diagrams alike? Well, something that I see that's the same is that they both have a 4 and a 3. Here's a 4, here's a 3 on the left. And on the right side, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4 repeats of 3. I can also see a 4 and 3 in each equation. 4 and 3, 4 and 3. Something else, they both have the bracket to show the total. Right, so remember that this is a bracket, this line thing down here. Right, that's a bracket. So the number down below is the total. 4 plus 3 is 7. And on the right side, here's the bracket. 4 repeats of 3 is 12. That's a way that they're alike. So how are they different? Well, one way that they're different, only one has equal parts. On the left, my 4 is just a little bit bigger than 3. This box right here is just a little bit bigger than the box that has the 3 in it. On the right, all of those boxes are equal size because it's got the same number inside each one. 
Another thing that's different is that the totals are different. That's the number that went with the bracket. On the left, the total is 7, and on the right, the total is 12. Let's move down to section 1.2. Here are two tape diagrams. Match each equation to one of the tape diagrams. This is tape diagram A. It's got a 4 and an X inside, and at the bottom of the bracket, it says 12. Here's the other tape, whoops, try that again. Here's the other tape diagram B. It's got a bunch of X's inside, and at the bottom of the bracket, it says 12. To complete this, I want you to decide A or B for each equation. Let's try two of them together. For number one, so I'm looking at this box right here. It says four plus X equals 12. Do you think that's box A or box B? Well, I think it's box A because box A has a four and an X inside of the tape. Let's try the next one. 12 divided by four equals X. Remembering that divide means to split, to split equally, well then it has to be box B because box B has one, two, three, four equal parts. So I'm going to circle B. I want you to work your way through each one of these. Just work your way down and guess A or B. Some of them you might be absolutely sure about, and some of them you might not be quite so sure about. Go through all the boxes and make your best guess. Okay, let's see how you did. 4 times x equals 12. That's box B because it's 4 repeats of x. The next one, 12 equals 4 plus x. You might notice that they switched the order around. So the 12 came first. But this one still says a 4 and an x together make 12, which means it has to be A. Down below that, this one is really tricky. When I think about minus, I think about takeaway. The only one that has 12, and if I take away an x, I get 4, is A. Let me prove it to you. All together is 12. If I take away this x, pretend it's not there, Look at what's still left. A moment ago I called it A, but I really meant 4, right? So if I take away an X from the inside, I'm left with 4. All right, so that means that this one is A. Let's move over to the top right. 12 equals 4 times X. Again, it looks like they switched around the order, right? But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what side that 12 is on, right? The one that has 4 repeats... Four repeats of x is b. Right. So the next one down, 12 take away 4 equals x. If I look at b, I can't cross out 4. There's no number 4 inside. But if I look at a, I can cross out the number 4. I had 12. Now I took away 4. See how I'm left with an x? That means 12 minus 4 equals x is a. We're almost done x equals 12 minus 4. I think this is still a. Let's find out. x equals 12 minus 4. All right. This back here. This one. Will you have x if you take away 4 from 12? Yeah. It's kind of a different way of saying what we just did. I took away 4 from a total of 12. I still have x left. That means this one is a. And the very last one, this is the one where lots of kids say, oh, this one's got to be a. Because I've noticed that every problem that has a plus in it is about A. But look at B. If we start on the right side and we go, sorry, if we start on the left side and we go across to the right side, here's an X and another X and another X. That's X plus X plus X plus one more X. If we add them up all individually, we'll get to 12. So this one has to be B. If you did great on this, awesome. If you didn't do so great on this, that's okay. It's the first day of our new unit. Let's jump to some questions. How can you tell if a diagram represents addition or multiplication? So these are the two that we just saw. One way that you might know is that multiplication always has equal parts. Always, always, always. Addition probably won't have equal parts, right? We could call this one x plus x plus x plus x, right? It gets kind of long and tedious to do that. So that one has to be multiplication, right? Um, but again, we could call it addition, but it's just more efficient to call it multiplication. Once we were sure about one equation, how did you find others that matched the same diagram? All right, so you might have gone through it a different strategy, and you might have looked for things that looked the same. For example, if you look at all my orange ones, do you notice how these three here 
one, two, three, our multiplication or division. And then if you remembered that this one is multiplication because it's the same thing over and over and we're adding, that's repeat addition, right? Then you might have said anything with multiplication or division is B. Right? Conversely, everything with addition, there's addition or subtraction was A. That's a way that a lot of kids found it. Now I want you to turn your paper over and try section 1.3 with a partner. So just do these two problems. Notice I also want you to find the value of the unknown. So I want you to solve, figure out what number X is trying to be and what number Y is trying to be. We'll talk about these problems when you work in small group with me.